And we're back. This is Stu Miniman with Wikibon here with Silicon Angle's live continuous coverage from EMC World 2013. Day one, it's Monday. We've got three days of theCUBE, wall to wall coverage from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Watch live on siliconangle.com and see replays on youtube.com slash siliconangle. Here in the brocade, data center network transformation segment. And we've got a customer on here. Joining me is Tim Stevenson, senior systems engineer with First National Technology Solutions. Tim, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, it's good to be here. So uh, Wikibon was founded on allowing peers to share with peers. So what we want to do is kind of a mini case study. Look at your environment, show sure. what you're doing, and uh, what advice you would have for your peers as to what they're doing. So can you tell us a little bit about uh, yourself, what you do in, in your company? Sure. Um, like you said, I'm a, I'm a senior architect on the, uh, on the team, uh, developing our solutions for our customers and also working with the customers to help develop their customized solutions within our environment. Okay, and, and the First National Technology Solutions, where are you located, your line of business and, we're, and focus? We're out of Omaha, Nebraska. All right. um, we originally grew out of uh, First National Bank of Omaha. Right. That's how we got our name. And uh, we provide infrastructure as, as a service. Uh, managed services to our to our customers, and uh, cloud-based solutions. Okay, so you're a service provider then? We are a service provider. Okay, excellent. Across how long a lot you, of platforms. How long have you been doing infrastructure as a service then? So we've been doing infrastructure as a service since the late 90s. Wow, okay. So uh, back to the kind of the original XSP days. I thought all those died and came back, you know, 10 years later. <laughs> yeah, well, they did. <laughs> uh, Okay, great, so, um, and from an architectural standpoint, what, what, what's in your domain? So within my domain is primarily storage and, and virtualization platforms. So, um, you know, the, the brocade products that we use, the, the EMC storage that we use, uh, our VMware platform, Cisco UCS, all of that. Okay, can, can you give us a little bit of some, some speeds and feeds? How big's your data center? How much storage, servers? You know, what, what are you running? So, well, physically our data center is about 200,000 uh, 200, square feet. Okay. Um, we are running the, uh, the Brocade DCXs at the moment, but we're getting ready to put in the 16 gig uh, switches as we're expanding our fabric up onto a new floor for some expansion. Uh, we're running about one and a half petabytes of storage at the moment. And you said it was EMC, which is uh, VMAX, VNX? It is VMAX, VNX, Isilon, and uh, in about a week we're going to have the Extreme I.O. on our floor. Excellent, all flash. All flash. Okay, uh, excellent. Yeah, we'll get back to flash uh, definitely in this, and uh, you're running VMware for virtualization? We are. Okay. Yep, we're on vSphere. Um, uh, which are we on? Well, we've got a mixture of four and five okay. right now. Uh, excellent, and uh, when you're, you're the services that you're providing, are most of your uh, customers localized, or is, is it broader? So, no, actually we have customers coast to coast. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of customers on either coast and in the, in the Gulf that want a location for disaster recovery, as a for instance, where we're not affected by the same things they're affected by. So we typically don't get hurricanes in the middle of the United States, and we don't have very many um, earthquakes. Okay, excellent. And uh, N Nebraska, the, the cost per square foot uh, isn't too bad. It's pretty reasonable, yeah, compared to either coast. So it, uh, it makes a pretty cost-effective solution as well. Okay, great. So uh, t tell me, how, how long have you been working with Brocade as a partner? I've been working with Brocade for about, well, off and on for about seven years in total. Okay. So back when I was working for an insurance company, we, we switched over to Brocade. Um, went over to went over to First National Bank. We were using something else. Switched over to Brocade because uh, the other thing wasn't performing the way we wanted it to, and we knew that Brocade would. Okay. Uh, so if I think about th service providers, uh, you know, one of the challenges usually is, is growth. Uh, you yes. know, how how fast are you adding? Uh, you know, how many new ports and <laughs> and how do how do you do that? And uh, you know, how, what's your speed to deployment on these kind of things? Right, so our, our speed of deployment really is, is dependent upon our, on our customers, but we are growing, um, adding ports, adding storage. Um, we're growing at about a, almost 100% a year. Okay. So we're a little bit over uh, you know, industry standard. Okay, and uh, you know, how's, how's your network, and how, does Fiber Channel kind of meet that growth pretty well? Uh, Fiber Channel is pretty much the only network that's going to meet that that's going to meet that growth requirement that we have and keep the performance at the levels that we need it to for our, for our customers. Because uh, our, our I.O. Um, you know, load doesn't match the norms of a standard company 
because we have you know, literally hundreds of companies that are, that are hosting their most important systems in our facility. So the, the I.O. requirements that we have are much, much higher than a standard company would have. So we have to have equipment that performs at a much higher level than you necessarily would have to have within a given enterprise. Okay, it's interesting. I've, I've talked to many service providers that are running Ethernet, even many Brocade service provider partners mm -hmm. uh, that, that, that are running Ethernet. So, you know, what, what is, explain to me what is Fiber Channel doing for you that, that Ethernet can't? So, it, at least as it stands right now, now I expect that Ethernet's going to change in, you know, over time and become a more stable platform for it. But, but really what the, what the Fiber Channel does for us is it, it gives us that rock solid performance every time, all the time, no matter, no matter what we do to it, it is going to perform and it's not going to be the bottleneck the bottleneck's going to be in the storage platform or it's going to be on the server side or somewhere else, but not in that fiber channel network. Yeah, Tim, is, uh, we used to say in the storage world, uh, the networking folks that have to deal with storage think that QoS is a four letter word. So it seems like that <laughs> is what you're saying. So it's, it's not necessarily the speed performance, but the reliable, you know, I know what I'm getting, Absolutely. I know always what I'm getting, it's, and that's what fiber channel delivers for you. It's predictable. And predictability is key when you're providing services for somebody else. Yeah, I um, wonder if we could talk a little bit about Flash, because one of the sure. things uh, our CTO from Wikibon, David Floyer, has said, uh, Flash is all about kind of latency and performance, but predictability of, mm -hmm. of that latency is even more important than the low latency. So uh, yeah, you, you bring an extreme I.O. in, you know, what, what's your experience been with Flash so far? Uh, we, we do have Flash in almost every one of our storage arrays okay. uh, as they stand right now. Um, where we run into, run into problems is when we start to load uh, we, we have customers that have requirements for a single application to have between 15 and 25,000 IOs per second um, of throughput, which is which is pretty substantial. You put a couple of those on a VMAX, and you can you can potentially overrun it depending on how they're how they're reacting. So, bringing Extreme IO in that can handle a million IOs per second and keep the performance where it needs to be because these are critical business intelligence decision-making applications that they're, that they're using, and they don't, they don't have time to wait for an answer to come back, okay. which is why we're switching over to some of these technologies. Okay, have, have you guys tried any of the server-based flash? Um, no. Okay. <laughs> we have not. Fair enough, moving on then. Um, a comment, no? Um, well, no. Okay. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> no, Sorry. no, no worries. So, um, uh, so, you know, can you talk about just that that marrying of storage and network? Uh, you know, what, what's your team make up? How many people? Is it the storage people that manage the network, or uh, you know, what's yeah. that configuration? Actually, the storage people do do manage the network, uh, the the fiber channel network. There's a separate team for Ethernet um, because they those types of people t typically don't think the same. Um, Tell me the question again. Uh, what's, what's the size of the, uh, of the group there? Oh, it's, it's actually just a handful. There's probably about four or five people that, that work on it on a regular basis that manage all of the storage, which is at about, like I said, one and a half petabytes at the moment. It'll be two petabytes in another four months. Okay, and they, and they manage the SAN also. And they manage the SAN as well. Okay, and uh, how big's the SAN? How many the, ports? Oh, the, the ports. Um, we've got two, two Brocade DCXs that are just about full, so. Um, I would say there's a, a good 300 ports. Okay, um, so maybe let's talk a little bit about the applications. You know, what, what, what are people hosting on your environment uh, and you know, what, what services do you offer? Sure, um, people are hosting, the, the easy answer is they're hosting everything in our environment. Their entire production systems, um, we go across a wide range of platforms. It's not just Windows and Linux in the cloud. We've got AS400 or I-Series in the cloud, we've got AIX in the cloud, and we've got our Z-Series or mainframe in the cloud as well. And, uh, and we provide managed services across all of that and, and virtualized services across all of that. So that's, that's kind of a, a broad brush look at what our environment is. It's just about everything. Well, okay, and uh, you know, t t talk a little bit about, you know, what, what does data center transformation mean to, to your company? Well, data, data center transformation, you know, if you, if you look at it, I've, an example, one example that I could probably say, cite is a customer that ju we just recently migrated into our, into our cloud environment. 
that has a mixture of a bunch of different platforms is building a new building. They're not putting a data center in it at all because we're their entire data center. Everything is becoming virtualized, it's becoming very small, managed by somebody else, um, and just purchased as a service. That's, that's where we're seeing the data centers go. Um, pretty much across, across all of our clients. Right. So, so, so Tim, I'm wondering, uh, do, do you have a take on SDN and what, the, what that's uh, doing to the networking uh, marketplace? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, once again, that's on the Ethernet side, so, so you're, you're more on the fiber candle side. It, 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 it's quite all right. Um, you know, what, what's been your experience with, with, with 16 gig then? Uh, we'll come back to that. Uh, so, so with 16 gig, I mean, we're looking forward to it. We don't have it in our environment okay. right now. Um, we have plans and we have actually, I mean, we're in the process of of being quoted for the new equipment and getting the 16 gig in. We're designing for it right now, yeah. um, but I would say as of right now, we don't have a lot of experience with it because we don't have it in-house. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I, I guess you know, you've got experience with kind of the, the, the jumps before. Um, usually the, the speed bumps are nice, you might be able to consolidate some ports, yeah, but there's new services that you can that. offer. Right. You know, uh, one of the things that, that we're, we're also going to start putting into, into place is the, the vSANing technology that, that Brocade provides to help us really shape some of that traffic. Since we're now going to be splitting across multiple floors in the data center and, and doing some of that, we want to really kind of manage our traffic better. And so some of the technologies that, that Brocade has built in are going are to really help us to do that, manage that traffic you know, proactively and, and make sure that it's, it's going where it needs to go to, to maintain those performance levels exactly where we need them. Okay, yeah, could you just, uh, you know, what, what's that mean to your operators kind of on a day-by-day -day basis? Well, for our operators, um, because Brocade is so rock solid, it means that they actually don't have to touch it a lot. They set up, set things up, and, and for the most part, let Brocade do what it does, which is to manage that traffic and, and place it where it needs to be in the time frame it needs to be there um, every day without stop. Okay, great. Uh, so Tim, uh, yeah, let me see. <laughs> we're uh, um, here, EMC World. This is Stu Miniman with Wiki Bon. Uh, Tim, uh, you know, final word I want to give you is, uh, you know, can you talk a little bit about, you know, as customers uh, decide whether to kind of, you know, upgrade their environment in-house or move to a service provider? You know, what, what kind of benefits do you see uh, for for driving to the service provider environment? So. Some of the big things that, the, the big benefits that they get is obviously the not spending the capital, not having to invest in all the additional new technologies. I mean, there's, there's such a wealth of new technologies that are coming out and skill sets that are required within the data center um, that, that companies are having a hard time keeping up with it. So really being able to rely on a, on a, on a service provider like ourselves that has a broader depth of, of, of skill sets and knowledge and people to absorb those new technologies into is really kind of a, it's a big benefit to, to the individual companies. To be able to hand that off and know that it's going to be taken care of and that they're not going to have to invest in it, invest in the people, invest in the training and the technologies. All right, well. But still get a piece of that really good, that good pie that everybody wants of all the new, all the new technologies that give them the services that they want. All right. Well, Tim Stevenson, uh, First National Technology Solutions, thank you for sharing uh, kind of your journey on network transformation. Uh, this is Stu Miniman with Wikibon. We'll be right back uh, after this quick break with our next guest here from EMC World, Las Vegas, 2013.